Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of big data. Today, my guest is from Teradata. We have the president of Teradata Labs, Scott Now. And uh, Scott, welcome to the show today. Hey, thanks for having me back. Well, it, it's a pleasure. You know, it's been a while since we chatted. Last time we had kind of a discussion about your unified architecture. But uh, today I understand you had a, an announcement to tell us about, and I'm wondering if you could tell us more. Sure. Well, we're really excited about this announcement because it really combines two of the biggest things that are a buzz in the industry right now, in the high-tech industry. One is in-memory technology, and the other is big data. And really, with our announcement and the release of Teradata Intelligent Memory, we're actually now making in-memory technology a and that's really a first, we believe, uh, in the industry. So some of the drivers behind this, and on the first slide that I've got here, is just the trends, the overall trends of what's going on. Uh, hardware architectures are providing a whole lot more memory at a much more reasonable cost. And so you know, memory per server, memory per node, and the cost of that memory is going down. That's really good. It's also a lot faster than hard disk drives, which is the traditional medium for storing large amounts of data. And so that's all really good, but at the same time, all of these things are happening. Memory is still kind of expensive. It's more expensive per byte to store data in memory, of course. And it also takes more power, heating and cooling and care and feeding and the like to make memory really work. So what we wanted to try to do is come up with a solution that leverages the benefit of more and plentiful memory, but make it applicable and in a big data space by reducing the overall cost to deploy it while still maintaining the benefit of the performance. And that's really the solution that we're releasing. On the next slide, we talk about Teradata Intelligent Memory. That's what the software is really called. And what we do, kind of the secret sauce behind this is, we leverage the extended memory that we can now configure inside of our hardware configurations. And we use this extended memory for in, for the uh, in-memory performance of extremely hot and frequently accessed data. So we automatically, and behind the scenes without any user inter intervention, understand what's going on in our systems, and we take a look at the most frequently used data, the most frequently accessed, the, mo the highest service level requirement kind of data, and we populate that in the memory tier of storage so that we can deliver extremely blistering performance against that hot data. And so this is a, a, a really smart approach because unlike other in-memory database technology that's out there, it's not something extra to go buy. It's not a separate appliance where you then have to do a whole bunch of ETL and data movement. It's not a separate database language or anything. It's actually inside of your Teradata database and it's completely configurable based on how much hot data and how much performance you want to drive out of your existing system. So on the next slide is just a little bit more detail about how it works. It's really not a caching software. We've been doing caching and using large memory for a long time inside of the Teradata database, but it's really an extension to uh, the memory storage where we're actually able to pin certain hot data in memory, resident in memory, so that it's available very, to very frequently accessed uh, kinds of uh, applications. So it's a complement to the existing caching technology that we've got built into the Teradata database engine. On the next slide is really where I think this is kind of the money slide. This talks about hot data, warm data, and cold data. Of course, all of the data that people put into their data warehouses and into their big data solutions is important. Right? When you want to look at extended analytics and understanding whether it be customer behavior over a long amount of time, whether it be uh, cross-organizational kinds of analytics, all of the data are really important. But when you peel back the onion layer and you look at the usage patterns of the data, it's very important, and this is something we see consistently across um, big data and data warehouse uh, deployments across the globe, is that there's a very small portion of the data that gets just used frequently all the time. And we call that hot data. There's data that gets used less frequently, but still in a reasonable cadence. We call that warm data. And then there are colder data 
maybe uh, older data, you know, historically older data, or data related to applications that get run infrequently, they get used uh, less often uh, in the environment. And so using, you know, kind of a lot of things in life conform to this 80-20 rule. In this case, it's actually even a bit more extreme than that. But the, the hot data is a very small subset of the overall data set. And so other in-memory technologies require you to make a copy of all of your data and put it in memory, which is a very expensive thing. What we do here with this configurability is plug in the memory and the super hot data, the very hot data as indicated on this slide, automatically migrate to the memory inside of our platform. And what that means is at a system level for all of your queries, for all of your applications, you're able to deliver at a system level in-memory performance for a fraction of the typical in-memory cost because you're putting in less memory and you're only storing the data in memory that really need to be stored there, those super hot data. The next slide just shows a progression. This whole notion of Teradata Intelligent Memory is a, is a path that we set out on some time ago where we invented Teradata Virtual Storage, which was the first notion of really looking at hot and cold data in an automated data placement kind of scenario. Uh, in Teradata 13.0 was the first release, and that was uh, now more than three and a half, four years ago, where we were able to automatically migrate data between uh, solid state devices and rotational devices, you know, kind of behind the scenes to deliver increased performance at, a, at again a very at a very uh, appealing cost. With 14.0, we actually extended the Teradata virtual storage to do automatic compression of cold data, and this is a really compelling value proposition for a lot of our customers because colder data they get used less frequently. Why not compress it, right? Because then you can keep more and more of that data for even a lower cost. And the overhead of uncompressing is very small because since it's cold data, you don't uncompress it very frequently in most applications. And now with Teradata 1410, the latest instantiation of our database software, we've added Teradata Intelligent Memory for that superheated uh, data. Across this entire stack, as I mentioned a couple of times, it's completely automatic, transparent, behind the scenes. You simply put it in, turn the software on, and you start getting the dramatically improved performance that memory technology uh, gets you. So you go to the next slide. You know, we think that this is certainly a great instantiation of the trends in memory and in memory technology, but it's a really different take on what's happening in the industry and how we're going to go and deploy it. And I think it really just adds to the overall portfolio of solutions and configurable solutions that we provide for our customers. And on the next slide, which is the, the, the final slide of content in here, what I want to indicate is this is a Teradata database software implementation, which means it's available across our entire platform family. So Teradata was the first to launch in 2008 a workload-specific platform family to cover different sub-segments of the overall data warehouse market. And in each of those platforms, which is specialized either for high capacity data storage at a low cost or for extremely high performance or for extremely complex integrated workloads across the entire uh, workload specific platform, Teradata Intelligent Memory will function. Simply plug in the additional memory, configure the software, and you're off to the races. I'm going to take a deep breath now and, and kind of close. But I think, uh, I think hopefully I've been able to convey to you the, the idea behind and the power really behind the technology that we're releasing. Yeah, thanks for that, Scott. You know, it's, it's very interesting how you've uh, implemented this. I, I had a question of when you talk about extended memory, so I'm picturing a cluster of x86 devices. Uh, so you're saying one node on that could access the memory of another device? I, is that how it works? No, what we're saying is we actually expand the memory capacity in each node. So one of the things that's really important in any parallel system uh, is consistency of the parallel threads. And yeah. so since we distribute our parallel threads across very massively scalable clusters, each unit inside of the cluster needs to be somewhat uh, close to a configuration of the next one so that those parallel threads execute at the same pace. And so the idea here is that uh, you know, Teradata from the beginning, instead of being a fat SMP or mainframe-like solution, right, we broke the big problem down into a bunch of small problems and put them into massively scalable 
clusters of microprocessors, mm -hmm. right? This follows along in that tradition where we say, instead of putting together a memory solution of, you know, 400 terabytes of main memory in one server, which would be really hard to do and kind of expensive to configure, yeah. we just put 512 gigabytes of memory into each of our nodes and it scales out linearly as you add nodes, you add memory to the entire solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so I noticed you, you didn't use the term hierarchical because in, at least in the HPC space, uh, you know, we have the same kind of notion, right? They move hot files um, off a disk onto something cl closer to the processor, like an SSD or something. So uh, I is this really a form of hierarchical storage management? Um, you can certainly think of it as a form of that, and we specifically don't use that word only because sometimes that implies hi a hierarchical reference to an HPC which mm -hmm. is an entirely uh, valid configuration and technology, but very different than A, the implementation, and B, the requirements for data warehousing. So yeah. the way that we've implemented this is actually not at a file level or at an object level. In fact, it's transparent and it's at a data block level. Mm. And so we manage it at a very granular level. And as I said before, it's completely hands off and behind the scenes, but it gives us a really um, tight focus on how we need to manage the data and and we and we make those decisions really in real time so that um, we can predictively ensure that extremely hot data is going to be in memory when it's needed but rather than moving an entire file or an entire table or an entire partition it's at a data block level because those needs change over time yes yes and and is this completely automated, Scott, or is there a way to tune this and turn up the dials or turn back? Um, how does it work? Uh, it is completely automatic, and uh, kind of like a lot of the other things we've built in Teradata, there is no way to tune it. We want to make sure that it's optimized and pre-tuned so that our DBAs don't have to worry about the care and feeding of the machine. They can be talking to their business users and adding value, right? So just like our optimizer inside of the Teradata database has never accepted hints, uh, we expect our optimizer to always just find the best optimized path to getting an answer. Uh, Teradata Intelligent Memory is completely hands-off and automated and behind the scenes with a very sophisticated algorithm for managing the data automatically. And, and I have to admit, you know, the entire Teradata virtual storage infrastructure on this, upon which this is built uh, is managed that way. And some of our early beta customers expressed concern about that because they you know, like to be in control of, of how things work. And I have to tell you that uh, uh, universally they've come back after going through those uh, implementations and even their production implementations and really thanked us for doing it this way because, you know, if you can imagine the granularity of data blocks across a multi-petabyte system, yeah. for any human being to manage that would be, just, uh, would be just really difficult. It would be hard <laughs> to build a tool to make that work. So doing it automatically is truly a value add here. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. So, so in terms of performance, Scott, I mean, uh, uh, memory, of course, is like an order of magnitude faster than disk. What kind of application, do they talk about time to solution, or how do they measure the improvement? Uh, the, you know, the improvement really shows up in tactical workload and query, query performance and query response time. So, you know, as data warehouses have evolved and really moved from the back office to the front office, and now, you know, our most sophisticated data warehouse customers support, you know, real-time mobile devices and real-time interactions with customers, uh, that demands an extremely high service level in terms of query response time and data freshness. And so by adding memory into the mix, we, we, we simply are able to move those kinds of workloads to the next level and the next order of magnitude in terms of service level delivery and performance. Well, Scott, this has been very interesting, and uh, um, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show today. Thanks again for having us. I uh, always appreciate your time and our listeners' time as well. Okay. All right, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of big data.